people looking like them that's that's doing yeah. something different than yeah playing is that ball. here in town yeah that's in miami at okay. the at the and, lowe's hotel yeah and don't you have a real estate event coming up that's it oh great man yeah that's it good man that's the one you're coming to that saturday morning and uh the kids will be there saturday morning too okay let's go man yeah it's gonna be good love it can't wait i'm excited It'll be here. It'll be here in no time, by the way. Yeah, it's less than 60 days. How many people are going to be, that, be, be there? Well, if, <clears> if <throat> we can do a promo video or, or, or talk about it here where we could clip it out, we're going to push it. I'd like to get 1,000 people there. Yeah, good, man. So, look, let's do it right now. You, they can clip it out later, man. Let's do I'm it. Gonna be, I'm gonna, when is your event, Alvin? January 5th through the 8th in Miami. I'll be there. I'll be there. January 8th, about you'll be there. To real estate, multifamily, how to get passive income, how to get depreciation, how to beat the tax code, how to get started as an investor. I'm going to be there live with Alvin Johnson. Hope. <laughs> That's it. Clubhouse Live, Miami, January 5th through the 8th. Uh, you can get your tickets, man. Go to uh, clubhouselive.us. And you guys, just so you guys know, man, I, I don't speak at almost anyone's events. Like, rare. It's once or twice, maybe three times a year. But I respect Alvin. <clears throat> love what you're doing. Love the community, man. Love the people that are going to be there. Get in the room with other people that are investing, that are looking at deals, buying deals, funding deals, figuring deals out. Become an investor, folks. And you can't do that if you're not in the room. And if you're not getting, getting the right information and the right connection. So I'll be there for sure, Alvin. Thank you, Grant. Well, yeah. man, let's talk about this three-quarter billion dollar South Florida multifamily real estate deal you put together for every family. Let's 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 pivot to to why you thought it was important after all your many years in real estate to set up something like this where anybody can invest with as little as a thousand dollars. Tell us about that. Well, look, I mean, part of the, the, the reason, one, is I want to b continue to build my portfolio. Yeah. The question the question was, how do I do that, right? So <clears throat> the traditional way is that I go find a building like this, um, and I go to a bank and get the loan, which is, that's easy. That's the easy part. Any, any, any great in lending institution wants to lend money on that deal. Yeah. Uh, because it's a trophy. This is the one I'm talking about right behind me. It's $260 million. It's the first of four deals we're closing. Um, then then there's the, the what's called the equity, as you know, on top of the debt that finishes the deal out. It's about $80 million. Well, I had a lender in New York City that said, Grant, we'll give you the whole, we'll give you, we got a group that'll do the 260 and we'll give you the other 80 million based on your name, your company. Right. And, you know, your net worth. I said, okay, thanks a lot. Came back from New York, flew back. I said, okay, we got our deal. And then I started telling Ryan Secco that works with me. I'm like, you know, I, I, all I'm doing is feeding the beast. I'm fucking feeding the devil. Yeah. It's the devil, the man. <laughs> they all got, they got all the money now. Like when, when are we going to ever break the code on this? If you're not going to break it, you're not going to break the chains. Right. So you're, you're not going to break the cycle, this. huh? So you're disrupting that. One thousand, and I said, I, I sat down with my team and I said, guys, I want to, I want to offer this to the everyday investor. Yeah. Now we've been taking money from rich people, not not super rich, but like guys with two hundred fifty grand, five hundred grand. But we've been leaving out the people with a thousand and two thousand dollars. Yeah. So last weekend. It took me about nine months to get this approved and about 300 grand. That's what it cost in it fees. Took that long? Nine months and 300 grand plus my staff's time uh, to get a, to get approved to accept money from people, the everyday family, a thousand, two thousand, five thousand. We had almost 10,000 people registered to be investors wow. in that asset in the last four days. And that's just been through your social presence. No ads. No ads. No ads. Just telling people about it. This is the building. It's in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, one of the hottest markets, arguably one of the hottest markets in the country today. Uh, the transaction is uh, it's about four by three blocks, literally four full blocks by three blocks, 456 units, triple A amenities, triple A location without exaggeration. Yeah. Um, valet parking, kayaks, 
great amenities. The rents are only 2,300 bucks. Wow. And when we, Alvin, when we put it under contract, part of the agreement was that I would be able to promote that I was buying it once I went hard. Uh -huh. the, the occupancy has already gone from 91 to 99%. Because everybody wants to be in that 10X, in that 10X vibe. They want to be in the 10X movement. The 10X. <laughs> even they, even John Maxwell wants to be in it. <laughs> well, let's get him in it then. Yeah. So, so um, you know, what we're doing really truly has never been done at this level, at mm -hmm. the institutional quality level. And the, the, the people that follow me, people that follow you have responded, people on Clubhouse, Instagram, have like, man, this is my chance. I've always wanted to invest with you. You made it, you made it easy. Yeah. So we got people writing checks for nine grand, eight grand. You know, we got people telling us, man, I'd rather take this 1500 bucks and put it in that building and just wait for you to do your thing. Yeah. And yeah. so that's virtually what you're doing. You get, you get a check every month, every quarter, every quarter you get a check. Um, you get all the benefits that, that I get. I pass every benefit that you can take advantage of. I give to you. I treat you just like I would family or friends. Yeah. There's no difference in the contract between my sister and somebody I, d I don't even know. Yeah. And so you've opened this up. So, so Susie with a thousand dollars can, can start to change her life by being a partner with you and, and Cardone capital and by having an investment in a class, a trophy asset that will never depreciate. She could go from never buying anything yeah. to being an investor in two minutes. Wow. And, and Alvin, how many people do you th see get stalled up in the learning? Man, most people spend years trying to learn and never do anything. Never, never invest. Right. Right. I, I, you know, the last you were at that mastermind I did. Yeah. And the people pay, they paid more than more than a thousand dollars to be in at the mastermind. Yeah. Considerably. And when we walked out of it, I'm like, okay, there was 2000 people there. And only 20 people have done a deal. Wow. I'm like, this is a way where people could come to my conference and 100% of them could do a deal while they're there. Right. And then and walk away with something that they can use because they're never going to use the education. At least I got a deal now. Now I became an investor. I mean, if you want to become a carpenter, you got to grab a hammer and hit a nail. Right. <laughs> then you got to learn. Then you got to learn, yeah, you, you know, how to hit process. that nail. Yeah, you, you, you learn through the process. Through the process. Right. So this is going to make the investor. Now you're an investor. Number two, you get to put on your bio. Hey, man, I'm a partner with Grant Cardone on one of his deals. Yeah. And, and that's very, very important for banks, because as you know, when you start investing in assets, you start putting something on your net worth statement. Right. 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 So, Grant, let me ask you, man, you. So you're 63, 62. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 63. Been doing real estate. How long? Uh, since I was 30. Okay. And you started with one little duplex out in California? I started with, a, uh, yeah, I started with a, a 30, 38 unit. My first deal was um, for, uh, 48 units. Okay. 48 units to the day, one of the largest portfolios, or, you know, known to a lot of people other than your big institutions. Can anybody do it? Anybody can do what I've done. Uh, tell me about you the know, grit. Tell and me you about shouldn't the grit. take. Well, yeah, I mean, I've been through. I've been through four major recessions. I never lost one. You know, more important than the grit is the discipline. Okay. I don't over leverage. Yeah. I buy great assets. I, I I say no to most of the deals I look at. See, see, Alvin. People see the deal I bought. They don't see all the ones I passed. Right to get to and, that. And, and said no to, so I could buy that one. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I could sell this right now. I'll bet you right now I could sell this for 300 million bucks right now. I could pick up 40 million before I close. Just that, that's, how, that's how much people want trophy property in this market. Does it have so we're extremely- to do the, Does it have anything to do with the brand? Uh, I don't think the 40 million, they, they wouldn't use my brand on it. If somebody paid yeah. 300, uh, they want they want that trophy. They want boardwalk. Okay. You know, they want that park place location. So and particularly they, they want it. They want it because now it's gone. You so know what I'm saying? Those guys buying those kind of assets 
are they are they looking for a long term appreciation, just clipping coupons, or are they just preserving cash to not lose any? Well, uh, there, there's a couple of things going on. Number one, these institutions have so much cash now; they have to put it they have to put it to work because okay. if they don't put it to work in an asset, they can't charge their fees. Number two, cash is being destroyed. Yeah. So they're yeah. worried about they're worried about inflation hitting their their do, de, you know devaluing their dollars. Yeah. Um, three, you know, if they could get a two or three percent return on this, they could still send that to their to their investors. Right. Does that create opportunities for you with the big institutions squealing to get cash out right now, or does it does it give you some impediments? Well, well, yeah, it gives me impediments because they they can pay more than I can. Yeah. But they can't move as fast as I can. So now so it's the not way I got it's about the dollar, it's about the, the, the way you execute. The the speed in which I executed. Yeah. Um, because I should not own this asset. I'll just tell everybody right now that the, the game is so rigged that that the fact that I that I got to buy this, I should not own this. This is not wealthy people don't get access to this, much less poor people. Yeah. That's Only institutions. Close. Yeah. 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 So so just so your audience knows, this is how the, 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 the food chain, the food chain goes like this. It goes poverty, poor. Uh, middle class, I finally made it into the middle class, lower middle class, middle class. Upper middle class, mm -hmm. rich. I'm not even a wealthy yet. Now I'm rich. I don't know what that is. Three, four hundred grand a year. Yeah. Uh, I got my, my house is paid for or something. Some bullshit. Then, then you go to 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 super rich, maybe um, country club rich and then super rich. And then wealthy, you finally hit the wealthy band and then you go super wealthy. Okay. These are the Bezos and uh, the Oprah's. These are super wealthy people. But okay. above that, above that is another level. And these are institutions. Black, uh, uh, an institution would be here. It would be bank of America. Then there's Goldman Sachs. And then, there's the freaking ultra super wealthy, wealthy institutions. There's two of them, Vanguard and uh, Blackstone. Yeah. Those two companies today are worth 20 trillion on their way to 20 trillion each. Each? But each. They will own 99% of all the assets on planet Earth. They will own or control 99% of all the assets. So my game is to accumulate this stuff. I'm not selling this to rich people. I'm not going to even sell it to institutions. I'm going to feed it. I'm going to sell it to the wealthiest companies, institutions on planet Earth that have an appetite beyond your imagination. And they could pay. They actually could pay a zero cap. Yeah. And Meaning wait. they could pay seven. They, I paid 260. They could pay me 700 million. And we could have a 10x return to every investor. They'll get rich. I'll get rich, uh, and 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 they 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 would still benefit. Wow. Wow, man. Do you have a let's 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 pivot for just a second and see if you want to talk about it. If you don't, you have any other uh, personal aspirations over the next five ten years? You know, you know what I, what I, what I'm thinking about doing. I'm like my my daughter came to me the, the other day and said, "Papa, she heard somebody say about, hey, Grant, will you ever run for president?" Right? Yeah. And my daughter Sabrina, my first, my firstborn, Papa, I think you should run. Yeah, I think you could do it, Papa. You know, well, she gave you like, all you need, right? So, so I, you know, when my when your kids come to you and they say something to you, you know, most parents are like, "That's stupid." Mm -hmm. But man, it's it's sad in my head. It's been it's been, and then see what I do is this: when there's some fantasy. The second thing I do, the first thing I typically do is nah, yeah. like most yeah. people. Nah, I can never do that. But then it's still there. It's wild, it's j jumping around in my head, right? Okay. And the second question I always ask after I say no way, the second thing I always do is how how could I how could I do it? Yeah. yeah. And and so here here's the plan. I'm just going to lay the plan out with everybody. All right. Here's the plan, and it involves this building right here. Okay. Okay, so I started doing the math on it because, as you know, you've been in my boot camp. I'm like, hey, just do the math. Yeah. So if I can get 10 million people, those are investors and partners and future voters. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I could get 10 million people 
to invest with me $5,000 because to run for president, you got to have a war chest. Okay. Okay. That will raise $50 billion in cash. Okay. Now, cash can't be lost because remember, if you're going to run for president and take money from people, you can't lose their money. Right. Right. Okay. So I can't screw anybody. Yeah. So I got to make good investments. This is over the next, you know, six, eight, nine years, right? Figure, figure I'm running 2032. So, so I got enough time to ramp up the properties. Now watch this. 50 billion, as you know, will buy. If I multiply times four, it'll buy 200 billion, yeah. Alvin, yeah. billion dollars worth of real estate. Yeah. If I divide that 200 billion by what I'm paying for this building, which is 260, I'm going to just use 200 million. Okay. I would buy 1,000 buildings like that. <laughs> okay. 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 Now, now let's say over the next, let's say the properties keep going up in value over the next Ten about two hundred billion dollars. A qu- I got basically a quarter of a trillion dollars worth of real estate, and let's say it goes up in value, it doubles. Now I got a half a trillion. It's two thousand thirty. Mm-hmm. I got ten million investors that fucking love me. Yeah. Because who do you love more than who pays you? Right. Right. Almost no one. Right. And I've been paying them every quarter now for the last eight years. And, you know, maybe it's a brother or sister, or, you know, you know, somebody that's like heard about me or maybe they started investing with me and they're in that voting booth on November the 4th. And they're like, OK, I don't really like it. Like, I, I don't like his politics. But he's paid me. Fuck motherfucker been paying me for every quarter. Bing. So, so anyway, it would create the war chest. It would create the community. It would create the the, the partnership. It would it would uh, it would actually change the game because no politician, no politician has ever run based on what they've done for people first. Ah, uh, well, that's that that giving spirit is always the one that wins, right? Well, yeah, the, but the real giving wins even more because yeah. I know a lot of people with the giving spirit that never get there to give. Well, but you're talking about putting people in a place to change their life economically and financially, right? So mm-hmm. absolutely, when, when that name comes up on the ballot, um, if nothing else, they've heard about you and seen you all over the globe. So it's, 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 it's familiarity. That people and people like, start fighting for me, Alvin. They'd be like, yeah. you know, somebody says, you know, Dave says something negative about me. And, 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 and Alvin's like, that guy been paying me every quarter, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good, man. So, uh, Cardone 2032. Yeah, president. me and Alvin. Me and Alvin, man. You could be my, what What, what position are you going to run no, for? No, just what? Secretary of Housing, man. That's an appointed position. You get in, just appoint me. N- done. done. I- I'm making the decision right now. <laughs> that's it. Y'all heard it here. Y'all heard it here. Man, Grant, uh, you got anything else you want to talk about? Look, I just want everybody to win, man. Yeah. And guys, like to win, you got to get committed to winning. You know, one of and, the things you said that I have used uh, very frequently uh, is that uh, commitment promotes creativity. Yeah. And um, man, that that is so true because I, you know, you you gave the analogy. Think about the last time you had to get out of that bad situation. You think you can make it out of, but here you woke up the next day, you got out of it, but it was only because of the commitment to that process. Yeah. Like and that. and if pe- if people would use that same creative commitment to to create their life rather than just when they're in a jam, you know, I mean, if you get you get put in jail, you're gonna be like, how can I get out of here? How can I get out of here? How can I get out of here? Who do I need to say? Like, like you figure it out, right? Yeah. Like if you love somebody and you want to help somebody out, man, your mom's got cancer and and maybe the the hospitals aren't solving the problem. You're like, okay, what can I do for? Her? What can I do for? Her? What can I do for? Her? Just don't quit, guys. Yeah. Don't quit. And 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 remember, I think, you know, Alvin, like people need to be reminded. We, most of us, when, when we're coming up, are surrounded by people that have quit. Yeah, we have. I mean, I got I learned probably how to quit at before I learned any other habit. Because I saw my yeah. daddy quit so many things. They let me quit. 
so many yeah. things because they didn't know anything but quitting themselves. So yeah. I grew up with a mentality to quit. Yeah. And uh, until I couldn't quit no more and said, well, shit, I couldn't even quit. <laughs> so right, I'm right. Something different. Yeah. Yeah. And then <clears throat> the other thing, you know, and you talk about this. I know you I know you believe in this and you've talked about it. And you have a commitment to. To 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 improve in the community yeah. is. Marginalized communities have to now finally wake up. You have not, you are not financially illiter illiterate. Every time I hear those two words together, I'm like, man, it is so condemning, yeah. so wrong to call, to say that people are financially illiterate. Okay. When the truth is we have all been educated about money to some degree. Yeah. We, we have been in fact miseducated and indoctrinated to do what the institutions want you to do. Ooh. So people are not financially illiterate. We need to change that from financial. I was telling Steve Harvey this. I said, you got to quit saying that, Steve. Our community needs financial literacy. No, bro. They need a, they've been brainwashed and they need to get unbrainwashed. Okay. You got to unlearn some shit. Mm -hmm. The bank is not your friend. Saving money is fucking garbage. Buying a house is not where you should start. Okay. Yeah. Um, paying down your debt is not good for you and your family. Uh, uh, the first thing you do is go out and, and, and go to borrow money to go to college, borrow money to buy a house. Uh, uh, you put money in a savings account or an IRA or 401k. All these things benefit the indoctrination that we have been miseducated to feed Wall Street, to yeah. feed these massive institutions that are literally, literally Blackstone could write a check to Zuckerberg, Oprah, Warren Buffett. Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and not miss the money. That's how wow. much money they have. And all of that money comes from those 401ks and all those kind of institutions. And the ETFs, all the acronyms, the ETFs, the 401s, the IRAs, the uh, fractional stocks, all that stuff that you guys can buy in like five seconds for $2, quit doing it. Quit bringing your hard-earned money and dropping it off at Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo feeds Blackstone. Yeah. Okay. These people call me and Alvin. You got, you trade your time, you get the money, you bring it to the bank, you drop it off at the bank, and the bank calls me and Alvin. Hey, you want a loan? You want to borrow Debbie's money? Yeah. Huh? You want to, you want to borrow some of Melissa's money? You want to borrow some of Brenda's money? Brenda, Brenda dropped her money off. She, she a fool. Grant, you want to borrow it? People, guys, I've been buying these buildings with your money. For, for 25 years. Now what I'm saying, Alvin, yeah. is like, don't drop it off at Wells Fargo. Just put it in here. Now it appreciates. Now it gives you a better return. Now you get the tax write-offs and, and you bypass the system. Yeah, and that return that you're paying, Grant, is how many times more than what the bank pays? Well, if I hit 4%, only 4%, then it's 32 times. If <laughs> yeah. I hit six, like I think I will, uh, it's um, 48 times. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Man, that's amazing, man. Uh, much congratulations on all the success. But it's, you know, I, I look back at, at there's some ultra successful people that their lives that we, we know them today. And it looks like it's been a steady climb, but you have for the last 30 plus years, man, been disciplined. You know, that's, that's your word. The alcohol, the drugs, the women, all that junk was done with when you made a decision. And uh, man, thank you for that because you've become a really, really good model for a lot of people. I know that your level of thinking has really impacted me and changed my life in ways that I can never tell you. So just thank you, man. I've, I've always been a guy that would dream and work my ass off to make it happen. But I never thought that I would be thinking as big as I am because of the influence that you've had on me. So thank you yeah. for that. Well, Alvin, thank you. And thank you for letting me help you, man. Despite that you and I don't look the same, that, that my skin color is different than yours. A lot of people, a lot of people won't let me help them because of that. Well, and and loss. I know, but the fact that you do, bro, like yeah. you, you have no idea the love that I feel because you, you don't, you don't, um, you don't keep me out because, because, because I don't, I didn't have a choice in my skin color. Yeah. And, 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 and if I, my goal, my dreams to help 
to, to, to wake up 7 billion people. And I can't do that. I was I was doing I was doing a, a interview yesterday and they said, you know, I said, bro, you, you guys, it, it was it was a guy that said, why, why are you trying to help our community? Yeah. I'm like, because I can't help mine. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, bro, the hardest people on in the world to help are middle class white people. Why do you think so? They think they good, man. Oh, <laughs> he said they think they good. They think they're good, man. You can't help them. White middle class man making three hundred grand a year, two hundred fifty, yeah. impossible to help. Yeah. Well, um, he's got, he he I'll, thinks he, he thinks his game's on lock. He's well, unteachable. But you know, even but for me being a black man, it's been culturally difficult for black people to do business with black people. Mm. And so when people see me on a stage with you or hear me talking to you. You've added so much credibility to that, to me, for that, uh, just because they see you as credible but may not want you to help them. But because you have transferred that power to me, as you said, it has enhanced a few people that look like me to possibly want to do business with me. Oh, that's awesome, man. So um, that's the point well, I, that. I, I, I want to tear down those walls because black people shouldn't have a problem doing business with black people. But I understand it because sometimes we don't have all the tools that we need to have the business set up the way it needs to be set up when we get started. And we don't be able to full, you know, pull through on our commitments, which gives people a bad taste in their mouth for that particular person. But the, it's generalized. Yeah, and, and that's of course. The part that we're trying to trying to dispel. Well, every time I'm around you, man, every time you're in my rooms, I like I try to give you time on the stage. You have. You have. I want to flow power to power. And that has always been a smart thing for me to do in my life. Other people that are doing good things, help them do good things, help people move up. That's what I always wanted, man. When I was on the come up, yeah. I'm like, man, will somebody please give me a little lift? Right. Well, that's what we all need, man. And I, and I just we all support you, man. We love you. Uh, you know, you got a big community of, of me and my friends that, that really just appreciate all you're doing for, for the culture, man, and for the community, really. Yeah, thank time. you, man. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Tell Jared and Ryan I said, hey, man, and I look forward to seeing you. Okay. I'm actually appreciate seeing you in Philly uh, December 18th, TED Talk. Am I doing that? Yes, you are. <laughs> I didn't even know that, man. <laughs> well, yeah. This December? Yeah, December 18th in Philly. Well, I'll tell you what I'm really excited about. January, Miami, yes, at your deal. Me too, man. That's going to be great. January fifth through a clubhouse live, Miami. What Miami. a way! What a way to start the year, man. I know it. That's 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 the deal. Starting the year off right, first weekend of twenty twenty two, powerful yeah. room, thousand people there, changing some kids' lives in the process. Yeah. Thank okay, you I'll see you there, man. With the Grant Cardone Foundation. Uh, that's yeah. powerful. Thank you for that. That's that's those are the kids. That we're going to have at this event on Saturday, 14 to 21 years old, to see people look like them really winning in a blade of the they've never seen it. So thank you, man. Love it, man. Thank you, Alvin. All right, G. See you soon. Okay. All right. Dream on, dreamer.